Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. A lot of sunglasses today. Accidentally hungover. Um, I think you're, you two of you guys were intentional. Mine was on accident. Jonathan Kite is here today. Uncle Laser is here today. <laughs> Uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, you get fucked up every night, so this is this is probably not new to you. I don't get hangovers. Though. No, you don't I'm get just hangovers. doing this to fit in because I'm very insecure and I'm a conformist. <laughs> you know? You're the opposite of all of that, by oh, the way. Man. I'm gonna take the shades off. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go without shades and uh, and and risk it here. You're eating first form protein sticks live on air to shake this. So we'll start with him. Where did you get fucked up last night, and what was the situation? Oh, just life. I mean, I was drinking as soon as I got up. I had to handle taxes and CPA bullshit. I'm just tired of it, dude. There ain't a process about paying taxes, doing taxes that I enjoy. So. Well, you know, if you did it yesterday, you were a day late. No, I know that's because I'm a dollar short. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, the comedy's yes, early. Hey, comedy's hit the early. applause button. Yeah. Hit the applause button. Yeah. That's, that's a tax joke. Yeah. It's a tax joke. Yeah. Right there, hit the applause button. You're late. <clears throat> I still don't hear it. I still can't hear it. There it is. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, he's doing. This is what he was. I, what happened, Delco? You know, we're all hungover, and then we got nothing. We got nothing. It's what so happened with the taxes? Uh, just you know, it, fucking paying them, doing them, keeping books. I'm not good at this. Like, a, I, I'll study for the test literally the night of. Yeah, because I'm a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? So. What's well, weird looking at you? I never would have guessed it. Like you seem like a tax guy to me, like a CPA. Yeah, you look like my uh, youth pastor. Actually. Your youth pastor? Yeah, yeah dude, those yeah. youth you pastors. You look like Vince McMahon's tax guy. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah well, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they merge the UFC? Yeah, they, they, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. Right? Vince McMahon's the head of it now. Yeah, incredible. And every time you talk, I told you this after you left the show. Um, it's like I'm talking to a, a wrestler from the '80s. Yeah, it's yeah. already built in. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy because uh, literally. Last Thursday, I went to a wrestling school in Brian College. Yeah, I saw you and Bianca. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah really for the funny, TV dude. show I'm shooting. Like, we went and this guy reached out. He used to be a wrestler, and he has a school there in Dallas. Or not Dallas, uh, Brian College Station. And they taught us the basic moves. I got choke slammed by some big seven-footer on, on the on the pad. I'll tell you what, I feel like I got hit by a fucking truck. But you Stone after. Cold stunned somebody, too. Yeah, Stone Cold stunned one of the yeah. – yeah, but it was kind of half-assed because I didn't know – dude, falling, that fucking – that shit hurts. Yeah, it's not yeah. – it's, it's not fun. You see him bounce Bounce, like it, it's got a little you think spring? that it's like it ain't. soft, it ain't soft. No, it's, it's a it's, goddamn it's, plywood. It's plywood, It yeah. fucking sucks yeah. dick. So, yeah. yeah, I felt like I got hit by a milk truck, but, yeah, I'm supposed to go back in November and train for like a week and then have like a real match. Who was your dude growing up? <clears throat> Who was the guy for you? Man, it's gotta be it's gotta be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Was it really? Yeah, I, was, okay. I mean, he's from like the same area I'm from. Does the same shit. So, yeah, you know. Was, Wait, what's the same shit? Like hunting, blowing Hunt, shit up. Yeah, dude. ATV shit like that. I mean, the two outside. of those guys look like they live in trailer parks next door to each other. Like, yeah, it's yeah. great. Right, and then the third trailer park down, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, boy, oh, don't wow. even get me oh, fucking wow. started today on that. <laughs> Man, I will. I'll go. Savage I've been on with one that, all week. Dude. I've been on one all week with this. I can't stop. I ran, I'll go, Randy Savage. Mm. With Man, if I hear any more Taylor Swift well, he's slander, the, he's the one with the beef jerky. He should be doing the slap into a snap into a first form. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cup of coffee. Cup of coffee, Cup of coffee man. <laughs> Not your man, Randy Savage. Has anybody ever been on more cocaine than Randy Savage was on in that interview? In that interview. Holy, oh, say, holy shit. shit. You can Bro. see it coming out of his pores. <laughs> I miss like it. Like it was fake snow. Mean Gene's like it, Mean Gene's like licking the side of his head like a toad. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucked up too. Mean Gene was the one feeding it to him. Oh, oh yeah. Guys. You know, oh, he, you know he's got he's wearing one of those necklaces with a little key bump oh, thing yeah. in there. Fuck yeah. He is. Let's do another take. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that was his bump. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta have code words, right? Yeah, exactly. Dude, dude, it was mandatory back then, though. You had to do steroids, you had to do cocaine, and then they drug tested you. If if neither of them was in your system, you didn't get to wrestle. Yeah, you right. got cut. Yeah, that they was cut it. you off the roster. <clears throat> yeah, that was it. Who was your dude, Kite? It was it was probably Hogan. Really? Okay. Yeah, well, you, like, you're a little bit older. We got older the sign belt. I'm, I'm much older. Sign belt I'm not right talking there. about his father, Derek Hogan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm older than everybody here, dude. Old, old D. Hogan from World War II. <laughs> shit. Man, he stormed the beaches. That was his famous move. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, no, I, I, I did love Macho Man Randy Savage because oh, he, those were the yeah. two. But, but honestly, part of it was the Slim Jim. 
Uh, Slim Jim? Because I fucking love Slim Jims. I mean, clearly, but like the fact that he, this guy on all those roids and coke. Yeah. Yeah. And that was what he was doing. Snapping into it. It looked yeah. like one of his goddamn veins he was sucking on. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thickery. Yeah, I think dude. that's. that's like a penis with sunglasses. That's reverse marketing. How many people became fans of somebody because of the thing they marketed? 100%. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 100%. Look, it's happening now, even in today's world. Like, dude, I had that Terramana yesterday. Uh, one of our listeners brought it in on the show, and it's the Rocks tequila. Mm hmm. And I'm not the biggest fan of The Rock. And I'm like, man, how good can this be? Because I didn't like the energy drink. Why are you not the biggest fan yeah, of The Rock? Yeah, what is that? Let's go let's revisit that. Yeah, we'll go into that. So uh, you start off as a wrestler, and then you do all the shit, right? And then yeah. you want to become like a global superstar. When you're out there posting every single thing you do every day, including meals late at night, I can't get into it anymore. Like, There's got to be some mystery to it. Some mystique. Yes. Like yeah, but you know how it's Jamie Foxx, for example. I know he's in the hospital right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the things that me and my wife talked about, because we're gigantic Jamie Foxx fans. You obviously know this from being on the show many times. I like that we don't know what's going on in the hospital. He's not like Jeremy Renner, where he's posting his baths, his shampoos, his fucking <laughs> everything. Like, He's not like that, dude. He's sitting it out, and he's just like, cool, man. I'll be back when I'm back. But I'll tell you this about The Rock. I think people follow him because of his lifestyle. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think I just, that yeah. that's what he's... I mean, I do think that there are people who have an interesting enough life. The problem is most other people on social media, where it's like probably the totality of their life isn't as interesting. Yep. And so with The Rock, I do think that he's a motivator for a lot of people with those meals. He is, correct. Yep. But the problem is, as an actor, I can't believe anything anymore because I'm, I'm expecting like a can of Zoa to pop out. Terramana, uh, some Under Armour gear. Like, he's got so many mm. businesses. And Kevin Hart's starting to get that way for me, too, where it's like, dude, he's on Shark Tank now on Friday night. I think you got to blame the media team. So, you know, when you are as active as The Rock is, you hire four or five dum dums yep. to follow you around and do everything. And they've, they feel constantly like they need to justify their jobs or this stream of consciousness posting all the time. I don't think The Rock would be sharing like that. Because look at the stuff he does when he gets caught off camera. He's like trolling people in traffic. Yeah. Like yeah. he pulls up next to someone and he goes, hey, I'm, I know you know I am The Rock. Fuck you. And yeah. he drives off. It's like, that's awesome. Yeah. That's I really shit, like that. That shit yeah. I like. It's yeah. just the rest of it where it's just Well, like, that feels yeah. more human. It does. It is, yeah. correct. Well, that's yeah. probably who he is. I mean, you know, we if you get inundated with anybody, you're going to be like, all right, dude. Dial it back a little bit. Let's let's calm the fuck down. Yeah, everybody's shedding their glasses. By the way, is it? Are you all right? Yeah, well, I think we're, I think we're taking we're, off. I started. I just realized that I looked like a, a douche. The, no, the, the thing is, I, I don't get hung over either. Mm. The reason I wear sunglasses the day after I drink is because my eyes look like um, fucking airbags on an Audi. Yeah, and it's like. And so, and you mean like how Pete Davidson's eyes always like look? Butthole, butthole eyes. Butthole eyes. Yeah, butthole eyes, yeah. yeah I, I, I should be so lucky. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, these are uh, these are fucking brought to you by uh, Charmin. And um, <laughs> it's just like it's it's just it's it's insane how they look. They 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 look like um, squirrels just hiding nuts for the winter. Well, you look you don't you do a bit about how you can't do cold commercials? Yeah, cold that's one hundred percent true. I I I, bought, I said I always look and sound like the first half of a Nyquil commercial. <laughs> I said I bought, I'm an actor. I've auditioned for those commercials. I can't get them because I can never sound like I can get better. Yeah, <laughs> just chronically ill. Dude, you that's can't a, do the after. I can do the before. And I but do you the can't joke. Do the that's what, there was an audition and I went out for it and I was just it was for Advil but it's not as funny mm. of, a, of a thing sure and I did the <clears throat> Advil thing and I was like there's no way people are like dude this guy looks wrecked he, yeah. he should go to the hospital yeah. Advil is not going to cure whatever this guy yeah. has I don't look like I don't look like over the counter ibuprofen does anything for me yeah. if anything it just inflames whatever everything's going on in my body well the commercials you're in now it totally <clears throat> fits I mean it, Jesus Christ what's yeah. the one the Kia is it Kia it, it's uh, the uh, Volkswagen Volkswagen, the Volkswagen. Yeah. The Atlas, where you're just yeah. like a total piece of shit. Here's the thing, the though. Whole time. So it's the only like um, my brother who mm -hmm. like I'm a supportive guy, and uh, but he it's the only thing he's ever said in my career where he was like, "That's a great commercial." He's it was like, a good, it was a good commercial. Well, the though. funny thing about that is though, like, so the, for those who haven't seen it, uh, which is no one because it's very popular, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, but uh, it's like you know, it's a guy. They just told me in the audition, just walk. Like, mm -hmm. the things that are happening around me, there's no, like, be a dick to these people. They're just, like, you're literally watching the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. Just go about your day. And then they put everybody around me, like, doing that stuff. And then, like, the feedback was, you know, they're like, oh, this guy's such a dick. Or, like, he's so inconsiderate to all these people. But it's all point of view. It is. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, and, and with that, if you were to become, like, the next Flo, would you be amped about it if you did those commercials forever? So we just won a Clio Award, which is for no the... Shit. Yeah, yeah, we wow. just found out. I mean, it's a good commercial. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I mean, we got lucky. Th those guys are so good, the, the ad agency. And then um, all of the... Um, 
all of the the whole crew was uh, was uh, on motion pictures. So they had done like the the Great Wall with yeah. Matt Damon. Like these guys were probably the best <clears throat> commercial crew maybe I've ever worked with. And they were so good about getting the stuff we shot. Like there was like a ton of other stuff that they didn't even air. So I actually asked the ad guy, could we make this guy a thing? And so I think they've thought about it. <coughs> okay. So I I think that because be I want to see awesome. more things in life because we all know some asshole like that, right? Yeah. Or the guy who's living his life and he thinks everybody else is bothering his day. right. So I think that could go on forever. But then once you become that guy, would you be amped about it? Well, it it depends on how many you do because I've done I did a, a a gum commercial before that was a recurring and that didn't hurt because it was it was big but it wasn't big enough. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Like now, Flo Stephanie Courtney is her name. She is signed to um, a year contract. So that's the other thing. Are they going to do multiple spots with yeah. me? Or, because yeah. that's different. Like if they sign you to a, a deal yep. where they promise so many spots. Mm -hmm. And then, because those played on network television, which obviously pays a lot more than cable. Or, I mean, they oh, played yeah. at the Super Bowl and shit. Dude, yeah, it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. we played all the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, college nice. basketball. Yeah. Dude, it was awesome. Because I was working with Justin Long uh, during that whole stretch where I'm a Mac, I'm a PC. Yeah. And I, I chatted with him about it. I go, hey, dude. These commercials are fucking everywhere. I was like, is this... It didn't hurt him, though. Worth no, it didn't. But at the time, he didn't know. And I go, is this worth it right now? And, and he told me what the dollar amount was. And I was like, holy shit. Worth One, it. two, um, they sent a private jet once a month. And he would go and shoot for three or four days. Yeah. And it was in the contract for an entire year. Yep. But whenever they wanted to come and get you, they... You were there, and that was it. So, oh yeah, it's like a it's like a chip in John Wick. Like when they call, you answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have because I were, I did a Verizon one that shot in um uh, in uh, Argentina, and uh -huh. I talked to the guy. Can you hear me now? He mm -hmm. was in the spot, and he was like, "Yeah, man." He goes, "It's my entire life." He's like, "We shoot." I mean, it was an ungodlike number. I mean, he goes, I, I work, he's like, you know, 50 weeks out of the year. They fly me all over the, like, wherever, Mexico. 50 weeks. Damn. Cause, Hell cause, yeah, dude. And then they're dubbing it for the local language or whatever, or what the fuck? Well, so the problem is that the crews are cheaper in Argentina. Mm, That's why he would shoot cheap. down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the DP was Guillermo del Toro's DP. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, like, they, and it was beautiful. We shot in Buenos Aires, and we were down there for, like, you know, we were down there for two weeks. He was in every spot. We did, like, three spots or whatever. Yeah. I only did one of them. And um, they have to fly you in for a fitting in case there's weather. Yeah. I mean, they don't just like fly them in and fly them out. This was a while ago, so maybe they change it. But yeah, whenever he said he had to go into directing because no one would see him as anything else. Did you? Uh, funny. Lovely yeah. guy. Lovely yeah. dude. So, two things. One, uh, the Can You Hear Me Now guy spanned multiple companies. He did Sprint. Right? Yeah. So that, yeah. that, as soon that, as his deal ended, he went to the other one. Yeah. That character, you could be a dick for all the cars. Bro. To be honest. Yeah. And then two, going to Argentina. You hear that car companies? <laughs> <laughs> you could be a dick for all you. <laughs> He's part yeah. of big car. <laughs> um, two, going to Argentina. You didn't tell him you were like Jewish or anything, right? Because No, there's a plenty. Yeah, risky the, down dude, there. I went down there to hunt Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Just link up with Tim Kennedy and go yeah, down there. Dude, dude, I, I was the bear Jew. <laughs> <laughs> but more like a cub. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh no, but they they fly you down there and they give you you they put you up. They like that's the yeah. thing when you fly in those places and they have to fly you first class. Yep. Then the private is different. But the other thing I wonder is because Wait, does that fall under SAG if it's a commercial? It, it, it no, does. But anytime and it's, it's international. Anytime it's over a eight hour flight or it's ten a, hour it's flight. It's like a three hundred mile thing oh, okay, or whatever. Shit. Yeah. They you they have to fly you first. So we flew the whole crew, like all of the actors flew down. We we had a layover in Mexico City. And um, crazy diarrhea. And then um, I we flew to Buenos Aires, and that is a hell of a long flight, but we had lie downs the entire time. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow. oh like the, Del the Delta Cube yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was amazing. But the thing is, like mm. now, so the deals, when Justin Long was doing that Apple deal, the deals are slightly different. Like when I used to do commercials in my 20s, and then I went and did Two Broke, and I came back to it, all my buddies who run it, they're like, just so you know, the deals aren't nearly as good as they used to be. Yeah. So I don't even know what the deal, because Flo's been doing them for so, or Stephanie's been doing Flo for so long. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what her deal would be. Well, so a new it's probably deal. pretty good because of, uh, you know, the heavies. Right? Yeah, yeah, you think yeah, so? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Same yeah. with the girl from AT&T, uh, yeah. Lily, dude. Lily, yeah, as well. What, I, Melania she, Weintraub. Yeah. Dude, if, if, if she did an OnlyFans oh, for buddy. 24 hours and just said, all right, fuck everybody, here's my nudes right here for 24 she even hours have to post sign nudes. ups no, I don't have to she can post mm -hmm. lingerie pictures and but if you go of if you went nudes just for 24 <clears throat> hours i'm convinced she could get 10 million dollars in 24 hours just based on the hype and just wanting to know She'll and i'm married and i could even fucking like my wife would would sign off on that wait what did you say sir what'd you say she'll take down the internet Rob. oh she would take yeah she he, he she goes she would take down the internet yeah. she would take down the internet 48 hours 
I, no, 24, I think she could make $10 million. So it's like the purge, but with titties. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Um, Titty incredible. purge. Now, I don't know her in real life. You just said her name. Do you know her? So um, I wrote a movie that we're doing in Oklahoma next month, and she, um, we actually tried to get her to play my wife. And um, she was lovely. We, I, we didn't meet with her. She, the, the process got a little far, which was really nice, and she read the script, and everything seemed nice. But she had actually just had a baby. Oh, okay. so I think it was like to uproot your family, like for yeah, to go live yeah, in uh, that. Oklahoma, well, not let's, to, let's anywhere. Talk, that's a good segue because uh, you told me the other day that you've got this movie approved. You're starring in it. Tell me, tell me about it. Yeah. The deets. So um, I there's a movie. It's called. Uh, it's a Christmas movie, and uh, but it's not like so. I have nothing against Christianity, and I need to start and say that to that camera. Wow. I have nothing against, but I hate you. loved Passion of the Christ. Uh, I'm, I am Passion of the Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the first stone? Uh, I did. <laughs> um, we're having fun. Got him. Um, got him. Uh, got yeah. him. It's like a dunk tank. That applause for... button needs to be on today. We should just turn this into a 70s talk show at this point. Dude, you know? they, um, yeah, that, that's a dunk tank for Jews. Yeah. <laughs> like a... So anyway, um, so these uh, friends of mine that I actually met on a Super Bowl spot like 17 years ago. There was a designated driver spot for Bud Light. Mm. And, and it what ran, company? Um, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> dude, we talked about it the entire... I'm getting hate now for it, but um, but yeah, we had a pretty great... Go go listen to Kite Club and hear my take on it. But um, the uh, <laughs> the we did a designated uh, uh, driver spot with this a couple, uh, became friends of mine. They pitched me this idea it was a Christmas movie, but like in the the ways that anybody can enjoy, like Elf or a mm. Christmas Story, nothing to do with like with Christianity. To be honest with you, because those are sort of have been taken over by Hallmark or Lifetime. It's like they're yeah. all. It's like in my opinion, they're shit. They so, shoot them year round, by the way. Year so round, they're, they're in a Christmas business, mm. and then they shoot Christmas films year round. It's like a Christmas store that that's ever really closes. that's really weird. It is, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous because it's really bizarre. And also, like they're so cookie cutter that I think that they've sort of taken. Um, it's like there's no good Christmas movies anymore because like when we were actually pitching the movie, people were like, ah, it's another – and I'm like, no, 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 it's not like a Hallmark movie. It's not – there's no angels. There's no baby Jesus. Mm. I mean there are, but it's a dwarf. He's. It's funny, but I just mean um, – <laughs> but it's like we – because yeah, I grew yeah. up – like my father – um, is uh, is a dwarf so is uh, is a wizard? <laughs> Merlin, you know what he looks like. He is, yeah, a wizard, yeah. yeah. He um, so um, yeah, you know. So, oh wow, that's yeah, a real so one. He's been growing that thing for forever. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. 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 yeah, since the Middle Ages, and so um, <laughs> he was in the garden out front. Middle yeah, yeah. <laughs> just hoeing away. No, he's yeah. pretty tall. And um, so he uh, he his favorite movie of all time is A Christmas Story. Mm-hmm. And so I always thought that my father, who's the Grinchiest Jew you'll ever meet, but he loves that movie because it's not about Christianity. It's about all the bullshit we have to put up with with family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and stuff and so I really loved like National Lampoon mm-hmm. but we oh, just yeah. we lost those because they don't appeal to a mass market they're not you can't put those on Lifetime and, and they, you know everything's got to be safe for or you know it's the, can't be not safe for work and so I w- we were like well what if we made one of those about a family we do have a magic element and it's about a girl a woman who dies and comes back as a Christmas tree and she's but it's she's like we operate her like Megan the doll mm-hmm. and so it makes fun of all of those movies it's like a satire like a little girl cries and a branch just like reaches in and like wipes the tear off her. <laughs> and it's like it's making fun of all the horse shit and there's always a bad and my, one of my favorite things about Home alone is the fake movie that they have yeah, in the yeah, background yeah. you know so we have fake christmas movies just playing in the background that have the shittiest dialogue you could ever imagine yeah yeah and so and they're always and there are tons of fake movies and how they all love them and it's all garbage it is and, and there used to be a joke like on the production side of it of like dude if i get another christmas dog movie because it was always christmas and a dog and, and an animal yeah and i think uh like is bob back there yeah. uh bob if you type in christmas dog into imdb it'll probably have five, six hundred movies, and that was the bit. If you could incorporate Christmas and some form of dog, mm. you could sell them worldwide and they could play all day long on every to cable To families, network. right. There's no, yeah. right. Yeah. Let me, let me tell, marathon. Let yeah. me tell you something about dogs. Just marketing research uh, that we did when I was at Black Rifle. Yeah. Dogs make people about 60% more likely to purchase your product if you use them in their advertising. So we have a dog. It's called Pop-Tard in the movie. Pop-Tard? <laughs> Pop, he, he's Pop-Tarded. No, no, nice. Pop-Tard. <laughs> um, Pop-Tard because I was like, they always have a family dog. And yep. the dog starts mm. peeing on the tree and is mm. drinking out of its bowl. And it's like, there, there's like a cantankerous relationship mm. of hate, love, hate with the dog and the tree. Yeah. And it's because I was like, yeah, like it always helps. It's, dogs it, help. It and helps. we had animals always. on Broke Girls all the time. And actually, no joke. 
total serendipitously, the animal trainer from Two Broke Girls is the animal trainer for on the movie. No way. Incredible. They sent us a, a clip of, of her, like, look who we got <laughs> randomly. And I was just like, oh, my God. So it's going to be a reunion. That's awesome. When do you guys start shooting? Uh, Mid-May. Okay. Nice. nice. Yeah. And then hopefully out, what, Christmas the following year, I'm assuming? Yeah, we're trying to get it. Right now, we we are trying to get it a, a theatrical release. We have a, a bunch of people that are a bidding of where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And, we're yeah, we're trying to get out for this year. Holy oh, shit. Yeah, that's, yeah. Crazy. that's, that's crazy. a very that's fast crazy. turnaround. Fast, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah and we're having, you What's know, your shoot schedule? Like, fucking 12 weeks? Or uh, it's uh, it's the same schedule that Macho Man Randy Savage has <laughs> with fucking like eating. Yes. Yeah, with the breaks. Brother, Everybody's... there's no break. But that's what I said to them, because I'm the producer who's on camera who wrote it. And I'm like, I'm going to need an eye stunt double because it's like, they're like, dude, we'll, they're like, we're doing 18 hour days. And I go, yeah, but I'm going to look like a fucking tired glow worm on camera. Oh, yeah. And it's like, and my character, no part of the description is sleepy weasel. Yeah. But the, so I'm like, God damn. So I got to figure out. Uh, like what to do, but there, yeah, it's gonna be five weeks. Are you sure you want to be a producer weeks. after the Alec Baldwin thing, or no? You I know, know he just back. got off. He got they're off. Back. Got off. Bro, he's back, he, baby. It's, they, it's, hey, they, they dropped all the charges. I know. Last night. They're back. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rust is starting to shoot again next week. I think. Yep. Uh, I mean, I can't. The the I hope <laughs> they do a documentary on the new firearms people. Well, hey, she got off too. So, did you hear what happened? No. What was the yeah? The DA got thrown under the fucking bus this morning. Um, there was a modified trigger. Uh, that was placed into the weapon later on. and uh, Why? Uh, no idea. So they're trying to figure that out now. But he got off, she got off, and then uh, they're going after. Like, there still could be charges. And was like, no, there sure can't be at this point. So he got on and celebrated late last night with his wife uh, and their nine kids and, and her fake you know, Spanish accent and yeah. all those other shits. I call him White Nick Cannon. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, less, dude. less mothers for the children, but yeah, maybe yeah. Nick. I guess Elon Musk would be a white Nick. Cannon, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Technically, but, but speaking, he's got a stateside, and Dan doesn't, and I love that. He's got a stateside kill now. Yeah, I've never killed somebody inside the uh, United States, and Alec Baldwin has, and you're all good. Like, so he'll be back on set. They're going to do that. Uh, the 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 lawsuits, though, uh, civil. Will be gnarly, and, uh, and he he's gonna have he's shit. gonna have to write some checks for that. But at least he's not going to prison. I mean, maybe no. he should just get the rest of the family while he's at it. Yeah, wow. <laughs> go after. Man. There's nobody left to sue. Go after no, the. No, 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 no. That's the movie. Yeah. 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 yeah, dude, no one's gonna give a fuck about this. They just want to see like a most dangerous game yeah. with Alec yeah. Baldwin. Yeah, and at the end, he I kills know. the husband and yeah. the kid, and it's just like, well, I'm sorry, it's not yeah. personal. It's ratings. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does it in the total Jack Donaghy voice, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. I, I'm going to shoot you in the face. <laughs> I enjoy it very much. <laughs> this gun is brought to you by GE. Um, now, the craziest thing is he, I think, but I, I wonder if he's always mm. going to have the, like that, that OJ murder stank on him. Yes, for sure. Whenever you hear his name, that's kind of it. Right. So and that's it's always, that but I'm talking about in terms of mind. work. Yes. I, I, uh, Tough call. Because, like, I look at Will Smith still to this day, and especially after that Chris Rock special that aired the other night. Yeah. I can't look at him the same way. And when a movie pops up of his, I'm just like, eh. I, I just don't it's like Will Smith. And yeah, but, yeah, we'll, but, whatever reason. Yeah. but we'll see when the movie comes out, if he wins an Oscar or something. It's Bad Boys He's, 4. They're already shooting now. Yeah, yeah. but that's not... That's for money. <laughs> it is, but yeah. but that's still going to be a, a large chunk of time. And then after that, he's banned for ten years from the ten academy. years from the academy. Oh, no, it's true. Yeah. So I don't, so. I can't imagine he'll get an, a nomination. Yeah, can he still get a nomination? I mean, he technically can, they but I think send it in the mail. Yeah, I guess yeah. piece by piece, piece by piece. Dude. But do you have that with people where you, where they're tainted for life and you can't go back? Like every time a Michael Jackson song comes on, because I get kids now. It's, there's three seconds where I enjoy it, and then right after that, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. He he was licking their assholes. Like, I, this, like, it's too much. I mean, I don't... You know, it's weirdly enough, it, it's it's not even that... Like, Matthew Broderick killed a guy mm. in, 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 uh, in Ireland. Yeah, in a, in a really? car accident. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ferris Bueller killed a dude? Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. the amount of celebrities that have Yo, it's insane, bro. Murdered. Venus Williams killed a guy, yep. or maybe a chick. I don't know, but Venus Williams has blood. Yeah, she she right. I used she, to make a joke that Bruce Jenner did it, so that's why he became Caitlyn. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't. Be, yeah, yeah, well, let me go get Bruce so we can put him away, and then he comes back like a like a Medea character. Speaking yep. of Bruce, do you think he gets an annual prostate exam? Yeah. And how's that conversation going? Uh, yeah, I think you still have to. Yeah, right? you unless you want polyps or to die from yes. prostate cancer. Yeah, yeah. you still he, do. He yeah. must. Yeah, you have yeah. to. You have to. 
Uh, who else? So That's is that, who I want so to see. The, Dr. Pimple Popper. Is it the OBGYN that does it then, or who? Like, uh, now you got to go to the mail. Uh, Hard hitting wow, question. Yeah, 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 God yeah, damn, my man. Mind is I just want to know altered. answers. I want things. answers. Wow. Very too. curious. Let's that's that's great that he has two clits. All right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two clits, <laughs> double clit. Dude. Yeah. Um, but who else is killed? I am I like I know Dante Stallworth. I remember that one. Uh, the football guys I know, actor wise. Rebecca Gayhart was mm-hmm, one. Remember, mm-hmm. she fucking murked somebody. Uh, Who else? Jim Laura, Laura Bush. Jim Beheim? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. that's right. Yeah, Jim Beheim. Wait, who did he kill? One of his sons? He's got eight of them. No. Uh, some guy just walking down the road on the highway at night. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're talking about like car crashes and shit. Yeah, that's yeah. but that's what Alec the, Baldwin pointed a gun at somebody oh, no, and no. shot him. Yeah. yeah, same with OJ. I'm saying like, um, like I'm talking about these are just happenstance. But with Matthew Broderick, weirdly enough, and I do like Matthew Broderick. I think about that the, the, in Ireland that he, you know, there was a fatality. Yeah. But who, how, what was the circumstance? I, I, think, heard I thought it was drunk driving. Mm. Pedestrian. He was wasted? Yeah, all these people are hitting pedestrians. Yeah, I, I understand uh, that, but wait, was Matthew Broderick wasted? And do then... people drink in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, uh, he, he took the wrong turn, and uh, he just hit a 63-year-old woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he just killed the woman, the, yeah. but her daughter was in the car, too. Jennifer Grey was also in the car with Broderick. Yeah. Whoa, wow. really? Wow. Was she topping him up at the time? Or? Yeah, how was that gotta, working out? You got to wonder about that. If sure you're in a foreign do. country, that's why she changed her nose. Girl? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you got to ask every babe. time if, if they were getting topped off there. And then Menendez brothers, they killed their parents. And then the new one, yeah. too, like uh, a guy from Menudo this week said that he got raped by the Menendez father. Uh, and then the brothers want a retrial because of this, and uh, and the judge was like, uh, uh, "No, we're not doing that." Um, so a Menudo Menendez trial? Wait, yeah, dude, was that, that would be the best, wouldn't it? Bro. Ricky Martin comes out; he's got to testify, dude. Who, who goes, I can testify that guess what? He bangs. He bangs. He just he comes. Bangs. He, he bangs. comes into the courtroom like with like in uh, Miracle on 34th Street with all the bags of letters of Santa. He yep. just pops in. He bangs like overruled. Am I overruled. seeing? Am I seeing Jimmy Stewart there? Because he killed Did, quite a few people. Yeah, so Jimmy well, he was in war. Goat celebrity killer. Yeah. Yeah. He's killed probably dozens of so people. So many children probably. Well. Well. Look, he was in, bombing cities, baby. In war. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a yeah. combat pilot during World War II in Korea. I shot so. him all. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. We got a Bob actually does one impression. It's oh! Jimmy Stewart, and it's the greatest Jimmy Stewart ever. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, it's your time to shine. Uh, yeah, your, your money's not here. It's in Steve's house, and I killed the children. Oh God! Oh God! I can hear their screams. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> that was aw- that felt like that, that was pretty was, dark. He was yeah. He was oh, he was hysteric. So he was in hysterics and coming at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> that's Close Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, you know, Dan, oh, career. Yeah. Actually, Dana Carvey does a good Jimmy Stewart getting a blowjob. Oh, he does from like the early '90s. Yeah, funny. That. That's, that's really a good one. one. That's yeah. a good Very one. Job. Jimmy he, Stewart, very talented, bro. Mr. Carvey. He's been doing the rounds lately. I think he was on Adam Show recently. Yeah. Oh, Dana Carvey. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got a huge podcast. Yeah. Um, it's him and David Spade. Yeah, David yeah. Spade. Oh, wow. Yeah, those guys crush. Very fun. Davis. Yeah. A lot of David. Called Fly on the Wall. Now you've been doing some stuff recently. Uh, you got a call from a, fr- a former friend of yours or something. For what? Stri- a stripper lady. And then she asked you oh, to come over to yeah, her house. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so on the last episode, I talked about how I hate the Amish because they're cucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And then like that guy in Vegas wanted me to wear his fucking socks while I fucked his wife. Or he yes. wanted to wear my socks while I fucked his wife. So by the way, so many people commented like, dude, for $2,500, you should have let the guy wear your socks while you fucked his wife. Well... Look, my mama gave me them socks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And also, the good Lord every now and again gives you the opportunity to make up for something that you fucked up. Yeah, so it all comes full circle. It's like Uh the Lion King. You know what I'm saying? That's where we're going with this. And so the other night, I'm sitting on my couch. I'm just smoking a little weed, watching The Sopranos, you know, just having a little me time. And this little uh, first time watching or is it? I just rewatch it. Sometimes I like to go back and see that, you know, there's little subtleties you miss. Sure. And uh, she calls me. And she doesn't say hi or hello. Like, we, we we kind of hooked up a couple months back. We're just kind of friends now. But she goes, hey, if I send you my location, will you come to Bee Caves over here and uh, fuck me in front of this dude while he jerks off for $2,500? And I was like, dude, what? And she's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, is he going to touch me and shit? Or, like, is he going to, like, direct me and shit? And she's like, no, he's just going to beat off in the corner. I go, yeah, let me shower. I'll be there in a minute. And so I get there. That's a That's a... <laughs> Very positive attitude. By yeah, way. look, I, I'm helping a friend. If she had a flat tire, I'd be doing the same thing. Positive. You know what I'm saying? Like, H- you know? like HIV positive. And so I, I get over there, and I'm thinking, all right, so this dude's probably going to be a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Some old, creepy old man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Well, you know, he answers the door in his wife's thong with a little wiener hanging out. And I'm just like, 
and he's six five, two hundred and like sixty five. Did he have a oh, weird? Shit. Did he have a weird dick? It was extremely weird. Mm. Extremely weird. White yeah. or black? He was a white guy. Okay. And uh, <laughs> you know, there's that Austin Strangler going around. I'm thinking, yo, if this guy's him, Randy Street Ripper, yeah, this is a big bear right here. Yeah. It's gonna be hard for me to take this motherfucker down if shit goes south. And uh, we came in there. They settled the money. She like spit beer in his face, punched him, hit him, told him his dick was way smaller than mine, and I just had to fuck him or fuck her while he watched in a chair on the bed. And it was like. You know, I mean, it was very strange. How, I, how I, long? How long did you last in something? I like mean, that? Uh, about twenty-five minutes. I was getting paid about hundred dollars a hundred dollars a minute. A pump. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah did you pump. did you count the strokes? Because I'd like to know that break. Well, yeah, I, we need to get yeah. Statcast. I on needed to get thing. a counter. Should have yeah. had a counter in there. For we'll sure. do Apple TV next yeah. time. And have but it was. Did you uh, hear the guy? Yeah. So he was kind of grunting and shit. So I had to like put them horse blockers on, like mm, things that the guy's not fucking there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he kept getting up and moving. And at one point, I was like, hey, man, you need to sit the fuck down, dude. You're making me nervous. Well, yeah. I you think that's probably, he may have been intentionally trying to antagonize He might have, but Because clearly he enjoys being disciplined, right? He, well, she was beating the living piss out of yeah. him. You know what I'm saying? Like mid, like fuck, she'd reach over there and throw a pillow at him or throw something at him. You know what I'm saying? He can't, and then he got up, he's like, I want to put on cuckold music. I didn't even know that was a playlist. What, what would he play? It, yeah. Just some kind of like off the wall, like 90s rave music. You know what I'm saying? Like, like oh, I, I did, I, Sasha you know and Digweed, yeah, yeah, some shit like, like that. that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sandstorm or Big whatever man, the fuck. You know sure, what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, uh, one more time, we Down knocked pump. it. We knocked it out, and uh, yeah, I should have turn around. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what happens afterwards? Like you come, yeah, right? I come, inside of her. No, or? I come on her back or uh, whatever, and she like takes it, and smears it on. It was weird. I was like, that's gonna be extra. You Did know she know do it like Simba? Yeah, like where she paints. Yeah, where she paints. And then they the play that song. Yeah. But then Whatever she's the like, yeah, she's, yeah. She just holds, holds up his tiny dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hates its forehead. <laughs> yeah. 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 So fucking, she's like, yeah, here's your money. She's like, you can stay and watch me beat him up or you can kick rocks. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to the house. You know what I'm saying? But it was a. Uh, I all said, cash hey, transaction. All cash, all under the table. We'll keep yeah. that on the low from the tax man, obviously. Well, I just did them, so I'm fine yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, you're good yeah, now. Obviously. Now, what did you do when you, got, when you got back home? Did you start watching The Sopranos again? Yeah, I just went right back to my, the regularly scheduled No programming. decompression. Yeah, no, dude. I mean, look, you just, it's like changing a flat tire. That might be you why just, you're hungover today, buddy. You need no, to take some time in your personal life to start processing some of this. No, dude, I shit just feel doing. like if you don't, if you don't, like, you know, my daddy died at 40, kept all his emotions inside, you know what I'm saying? Died of a heart attack, and that's why I want to go out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got enough. time to be a yeah. bitch about it. Just like, pump 25, and dump. Yeah. Hey, a 20 is a 20 where I'm from, you know pump what I'm saying? Pump and dump is the name of a gas station where they only have gas and shit shitters. That's I, it. That's I it. thought you were going to say that it's just a sperm bank. Oh, well, we can do that. Uh, that'd be too. great yeah. too. Pump and I mean, dump. I've, Either way would be great. I've, I've, I've definitely pounded off in public restrooms. As a matter of fact, I've pounded off in porta shutters in Iraq. Yeah, which oh, is uh, incredible. Yeah. The stink yeah. on that. When I watched Jarhead with Jake Gyllenhaal, oh, yeah. I could physically oh, yeah. smell it yep. in the theaters, and I'm, I'm just assuming that was the same situation. Whenever people t- tell me horror stories about like Coachella and fucking Burning Man and shit, I'm like, you don't tell yeah. me. No. Oh, let <laughs> me tell you. Yeah. I can't even watch. I deer can't Hunter. come unless I, I can't shit watch now. Deer Hunter Dude. anymore because of that fucking movie. I always think about that Which, guy sending his that tape, and it's mm. inf- it's like I don't can't even watch Deer Hunter. I like. I, I, I can't have, even play Russian Roulette anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do put watches up my ass all the time though. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why not? You, you need to. Why not? In case you have a kid. One day, well, and that's you gotta Pulp give fiction, him that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. the same guy, it's yeah, it's the same, same dude. guy, yeah. dude. Yeah. Same guy, and you know, he brought it back for that. Oh, yeah. Well, he, I think he wore the watch in his ass from Deer Hunter all the way to Pulp Fiction, which is Deer Hunter's what 79? Yeah, right yeah. around there. And yeah. then it, Pulp Fiction's 95, 94. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. in there. He just turned 80 the other day, Christopher Walken. He'll, I don't think he'll ever die. No, I don't think so. Either. I honestly think that. Sometime around 90, he's going to sprout wings or something and just start flying. He's going to patrol America. That's what yeah. I think. You know who his wife is? Who? She cast The Sopranos. She was the casting director really? for The oh, Sopranos. Really? Yeah. 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 Isn't that weird? It's all full circle. Full circle, yeah. baby. Hey, there there, is. Is. there great, you are. Okay. Great casting, by the way. Oh, yeah. incredible. She was one of the best casting directors yeah, ever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I always wondered mm. what he did. Because in Hollywood, you never saw him out. You never saw him at parties. You never I, like. I've never seen him... One time. He was, was a professor at Hogwarts, I think. In his <laughs> Along with his dad. Dude, uh, my, my dad was the third Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> the, Did you, have you seen him? Have you met him in real life? I've never met Christopher Walken. I never met him. And um, Have you heard stories? I had a, there's, well, he's one of those guys that y- you die the hero or you live long enough to become the villain. villain. So like yeah. everybody does him for him, you know? And so the, like this, this isn't mine, but a, a comedian that I uh, said, had this story that, that he, uh, he had an opportunity to do at a, at a charity event where they they um, 
he was sort of stuck at the table. It was a black tie event and everyone's eating steak. And then Richard Belzer like grabbed the comedian and was like, hey, come here. I want you to meet Chris. And then he was like, he's like, this is the guy I was telling you about, Chris. And Chris is like sitting there and he's just eating the steak. And then he's like, do the impression for him. Oh, boy. Oh, and yeah. oh, and he like sits down there and he does the impression. And he's just like, and then Chris Rock is just still eating the steak as if he's like not, like he's, he's acknowledging him, but he's, there's no, you know, and he's just eating. And after a while, he, Chris just sort of like puts down his, his, his silverware and he goes, I get it. <laughs> wait, wait. He goes, he goes, I get it. You're, you're talented. And then he goes right back to eating the steak. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, Has anyone like, ever had an impression of themselves done right into their face more than Christopher Walken? No, that's what oh, I'm saying. Holy oh, shit. You know, and, that, and, and people think like that he likes it or that he, I mean. No I one likes it. My palms are sweaty right now just talking about no it. One it's so it's it's so no one likes cringy, that. It's cringy, dude. I did it for Maybe Vince the Vaughn. first time it happens to you, you're like, oh, because you, you hear about like, uh, H.W. Bush invited Dana Carvey to the White House right. to do his impression for him. He liked his Once. impression. He loved it. Once, yeah. Yeah. right? Like, yeah. you do that one time in your entire life. Yeah. But then, you know, you remember Chappelle talking about it in the mid-2000s. Like, people just started walking up to me in public like, I'm Rick James, bitch. With his family. Yeah, it's like, family. Yeah. 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 relax, bud. I, I did it. I know what it sounds like. You don't have to. Have do you it. done anybody to them? Yeah, for I did Vince Vaughn for Vince Vaughn. And then... Um, he, uh, he would like it. He, You know what he was... He couldn't have taken it better, to be honest with you. Like he was so cool about it. Um, but it, you you have to do it in the right. Like I I had an opportunity to do Seth Rogen for Seth Rogen, and I'm like he doesn't want to hear it. And so it's like you have to be. It has to come from a place of like they either like you or it's being. Because actually, I met Vince through Jamie through Fox. Yeah. And so we were doing a, a table read for something, and then I came up to, and then he was like, "Yeah, do the impression," and he, his face went pretty white. Who said that? Oh, so who who told you to do the impression? Was it Jamie or somebody else? So um, what had happened was we did this table read for a film that they were going to star in together, Fox and and uh, and Vaughn, and and I guess Vince must have known that somebody there did an impression of him. He had heard a rumor. Okay. And then what had happened was we like went through the whole thing. There's no opportunity for me to just start doing Vince Vaughn, and so I'm I'm not I'm thinking like I'm going to get out of here in a weird way. I'm like I don't not that I don't want to do relieved, it, but relieved because of the exactly. awkwardness of that hundred percent. And yeah. so I'm like fuck it, whatever. So I um he goes to the bathroom and Peter Billingsley, the lead from a Christmas, a Christmas Story, story Cruz's yeah. producing partner, he goes, oh I heard you do Vaughn, do Vaughn, do Vaughn, and like. He, he had said Beetlejuice three times. Like, Vince Vaughn just literally was there. <laughs> and he was like, uh, yeah, yeah, do me. How do I sound? Like, do me for me, you know? I'm sorry about it. <laughs> and then I did it, and his face went as white as a ghost. But I was like, dude, I do other people. Like, I just didn't want him to think that I was like, you know. Just how, doing him, how just nervous walking around were you doing in that Vaughn? moment? Yeah. Well, I looked at Jamie, and Jamie was like, I was like, I mean, because it's a very, I think of it as a flattering impression, but just because you do, I mean, think about all the people that do Obama or Trump or Bush mm. that don't like them or whoever. Yeah. And so it's like, you can't imagine that everybody's doing it from a place of love. Sometimes people just like to do walk in and it's, he's like, yeah, that's what I sound I'm like. What do you want from me? You yeah. know? And so he was, he was, he took it very well. And, and, but after Jamie was like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And Jamie was such a, uh, it was so great having him there in that mm. moment. Cause he knew that it came from a place of love. Yeah. And so when I did it, then, then Vince like was like, he was cool with it. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nobody, uh, nobody says no to Jamie Foxx either. I mean, no. not many people do. How no. could you? He's like the most talented the, human being that's ever, ever existed. Yeah, and so fucking charming. Yeah. He's so smooth. And every time you're on this show, we talk about him because we love the guy. Yeah. I love him so everybody, much. I don't know anybody that doesn't like dude, Jamie Foxx, no. dude. People will tell me when they know that I'm friends with him, they'll be like, they're like, oh, I have a Jamie story. Yeah. And I'm like, and I love hearing them. Yeah. I'm not Jamie. They're always every, positive. Every, yes. They're always yes. positive. Yes. They're yeah. always like, oh my God, he came in with his family one time and... And he does, and then they're like, "That's the only time I ever met him." And it was—it's mm. just like an incredibly positive. And they were smiling while I telling it. I beat the virus. Oh I, god, I've watched that video a <laughs> thousand oh, yeah. times. Well, we, it's like, I posted on my Instagram. I think I tagged you, and I was like, "When did he? When does he do?" So Trump? we did. Tro he and I were working when we were shooting the show. On that variety in show, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. We were doing Trump. Mm. We used to do battle. I actually found an old video because <laughs> I was just going through. Um, Oddly enough, I was just going through videos, and um, I was like, holy shit, I forgot that I had this. And we used to do the two Trumps, wherever we were, whether it was on set, just going, excuse me, excuse me, right in. And then he'd go, excuse me, and i go, no, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> and that's all we would do, like back and forth. Then we go, we got a lot of great people. And he'd go, great people, so many great people. <laughs> so it's Trump, it's Trump as his own hype man? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my what God. Bro, we have like two videos of it. Holy and shit. I said to him, I, I, I told him, I go, this, if we did this, because we like put him up like one that people were like, oh shit, this is kind of crazy. But mm. it was in 2020 where there was like everybody was online. So I feel yeah. like it got lost. But 
I found one that we did. We went on vacation uh, to Palm Springs like uh, last year, and literally, um, we're in like we're just playing pickleball actually. Mm. And we, somebody just has the camera on it and said it to us, and it's just us randomly going, "I love pickleball," and he goes, "I love pickleball, <laughs> I love it so much." And he goes, "I love pickleball, so great. Pickleball is so great. I can't, it's the greatest. Believe me, excuse me." And he goes, and then he just looks at me and goes, "Excuse me," and I go, oh, "Excuse me." <laughs> yeah. I said the only time that Trump says "excuse me" is to himself. Yeah. Like he's yeah, only yeah, apologetic yeah. to himself. Excuse me, a lot of great pickleball. So many great pickleball. <laughs> That's a man. If you could get that bit, just... I know it, dude. It's so fun. But and he, we would do that with a lot of impressions, actually, where we would both sort of do. We did like. I well, a lot we, of them you can figure out from the other person. So yeah. if they get an inflection before you have it, then you can pick. Yeah, back and we off would just. It. This is lit- We were. It was so fucking awesome because we shot this sitcom during 2020 pre-vaccine where like everything was shut down in mm. LA. I said we were like raw dogging the world. It was awesome. And we would just get on set and they would just keep us there. And because of all the COVID protocols, mm. you couldn't <clears throat> leave. So all we would do was like try to entertain each other. And so like the cast and the crew, and we were all just bullshitting and having like, like it was awesome. Like when no one was really working, it was just like, it was amazing to be you around people that that shit were. like the last dance, man. No, yeah. dude, it's so crazy. <laughs> That's literally what it felt like. Mm. The last dance was obviously going on at that time. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, we couldn't believe we were the only production that I knew of in Los Angeles that was going. Yeah. That's what, it, so for us, uh, when it all happened, yeah. um, you know, Hollywood shut down essentially. Yeah. There was a handful of productions going and our advertisers called us and they were like, look, all the money's going to podcasts. Um, can you guys go daily? And that was the first time we went daily for drinking bros was wow. during it. And so we huddled up with everybody. I think Georgia was there. And uh, uh, we were in North Carolina. And we were like, yeah, let's let's do it. And then they were like, great. You have two other shows. Can you do those daily as well? So we did. Um, so all through that entire pandemic, yeah. we just kept working. Uh, no masks, no nothing, no vaccines. No, I mean, smoking weed, doing drugs, all the, all the fun things. Yeah. And uh, that, looking back mm-hmm. at it now past the time because when I went home and went to other people's houses or functions or dinners uh, with you know other people in the neighborhood, it was kind of depressing where it was like everybody was kind of looking at each other like, do you totally, have it? If totally. somebody coughed, it was like, hey, get get them the fuck out yeah. of I here. I said sneezing on an airplane was the new Allahu Akbar. Oh, or the N-word, yeah. where it's just like, hey, dude, you get out of here. Yeah, people were freaking out about everything. And it was amazing. And, and so looking could... back at that time, even though we were busy as shit, I'm glad we were able to work through it. It was, a, yeah. it was incredible stress relief. Yeah. Where, where were you during it? Uh, I was on the oil rig. But like, with the, with the COVID shit, like... You couldn't be have anything else. Like if you had a sore throat, it was COVID, or like if you had like an eye infection, it was COVID. Like I remember, uh, I went on a blind date. Like as they kind of started reopening Texas and shit, and so that was like a month and a half later. Yeah, a month and a half later. Yeah, because yeah. we didn't stay shut down for long. So third week of March. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, pin, I'm pent up in the house for a month and a half. Ain't seen a woman's touch in, in years. You know what I'm yeah, saying? What it feels yeah, like? Feels I like go out on a blind date, have a couple craft beers, we share, you know, a nice dinner together, and then I, you know, we go back to her house. And I like, you know, just do what two strangers do when they're in love, you know, we'll eat each other's buttholes and shit. Yep, and then, yeah. like, I got strep throat bad, like polyps and, like, had a fever, damn near died. Like Michael and, Douglas style. Like, yeah, 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 all the way. I couldn't breathe out of my goddamn throat. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to go to the hospital. I go to the hospital. Well, they put me in the COVID wing. And I'd stay, stay in the COVID wing for seven days. And I'm like, guys, I just need some chloroceptic spray and some ice cream and get me the fuck out of here. I don't yeah. want to die with these geriatrics yeah. in the back over here. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just couldn't have anything besides no. it was yeah. all It's not COVID. COVID. I just yeah. ate it was a all COVID. ass. Yeah, dude. I ate some yeah. out of season just, ass. Hey, I, she didn't have baby wipes by the table, and that is a rule I live by. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it's yeah. not on the bed or the, the side table, just and by don't the way, do it. don't yeah. forget to uh, once you get the outside, just put the one finger in there with the wipe. Yeah, just but do yeah, a quick gotta, twist. Yeah, yeah, little quick you, twist. Just tongue deep. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's all just, you got to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, little dab do. will do you. I'm all, I'm all about trying to fucking make people healthier. That's it. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude, like, I don't expect it. that people are going to stop drinking, stop smoking, stop eating ass. Let's just do it in a better way. No, it's hey, America. I'm the, I'm the Andrew Huberman for pieces it's just of shit. People, you just got to be informed. The more you know. The more, the more you know. know. The more you know. D'Anthony and I flew to L.A. to shoot the pilot episode of Adam Ray Show with Chuck Liddell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to record the audio book, your last audio book. Correct, yeah. And while we were there, I had to rent some place in K-Town. So K-Town was the only place that didn't have any restrictions. Mm-hmm. So they were like, we don't give a shit, and it's all in cash, yeah. and there's no yeah. nothing. No, I think we, don't, we don't want any contracts, it, we don't want any SAG. Yeah, it was like Persian dudes that owned the place. Yes. There was a bunch of crackheads out in front of the building, but and it's gold, K-Town, right? It, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was a goldfish tank that was probably 50, 60 years old. Uh, that they'd never cleaned. It was actually a pretty dope there. spot. I it was, it. Yeah. and we liked, liked it. it, and we and yeah. we had a we had a fun time there. But uh, my wife afterwards got sick, thought mm. she had COVID, 
in California was so vaccine, vaccine, everything else was crazy. Uh, so she went to the doctors and they made her sit on a, on a curb outside, um, eight feet or six feet apart with all the other people that yeah. they thought had COVID. Yeah. And uh, they wouldn't touch them. They wouldn't look at them, nothing. And they were like, hey, you have it and you should probably go home. She was like, you didn't even do any. You, you haven't tested me. Yeah, you for sure. Anything. Oh, dude. Well, that's where isolate, the joke. Just isolate. That's where the joke came from for me. The NyQuil ad is I go, people thought I had COVID. For 10 years. Like, they all... Long had, COVID? Long COVID, bro. Uh, the, lo- the longest COVID? And, um, <laughs> so long, so deep. Um, but I just... Like, that was the craziest thing where people assumed that I had it and I have um, allergy issues. And so I, like... In 2021, because I came to tech, I did one of your shows out here yeah. right away yeah. in yeah. early 2021 at the old spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Texas and will fuck you up allergy wise. And you dude, walked, in, you walked in with a mask, and I was oh, like, damn, oh dude. shit, we didn't know each other that well. You walked in with a mask, and I was like, hey man, you know what this is, right? Like we dude, don't give a fuck. No, I said it was because of the Uber. Yeah, they mm. made. Uh, that's yeah. why I said. So the first time I ever did a show out here, when um I did I did um smoke and barrels. Uh, up in uh, Georgetown, yeah, and I had to wear the the mask in the Uber. They were mm. requiring it, you know. Mm. And so I remember I got into the bar, and I didn't know anybody. It was it was uh, Dean's show, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, it's my roommate. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love Dean. That's where we met, and they didn't know. The, and it was be, John was on it. Like a lot of great guys were on it, and I knew some actually uh, uh, guys from out of town. And and so I get up there, and I'm 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 literally looking for people, but I don't realize I have the mask on, and it's like. Um, uh, it's like a it's like a movie f- from the Civil War where a black guy just walks into oh, a yeah. bar yeah. <laughs> and everybody turn with to see me with a mask and I'm not even paying attention because I'm looking because I didn't know Dean and I'm trying to read the Instagram DM that I have and so I'm just looking down like a guy trying to drop off Uber Eats and then everyone has the look at who's this queer yeah. <laughs> like that's the eyes and yeah. I and I look around and I and I look and I look, genuinely like go oh it's me. <laughs> I'm the queer. And then I like take off the mask yeah. and then everybody just goes back to normal. And like the music starts up again. People go back to drinking and hollering. And I was like, that was crazy. Well, it was a good way to separate who was actually your homie and who yeah. wasn't where you were just like, oh, well, you're afraid of everything. Like this is fucking crazy right I now. I mean, it was crazy. You see people today. Still today, still yes. wear a mask. Still yeah. wear a mask outside on a bike, yep. running, on a fucking, running, 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 or dude. sitting in their car with a recycled so air. Where friend, are you, yeah, dude? Yeah. It's just a dumb friend shit. of mine has a theory about this, and I haven't had the opportunity to test it yet. But I'm going to put it out into the world and for you guys to pay attention. They told me that when they see somebody wearing a mask in public today, whether it's on an airplane or just in public generally, generally speaking, there is an, a, a, an additional weird thing about them. Weird shoes, clothes, okay. got weird oh hair, God, or so their accurate. face is fucked up, or something. Something else is going on. They're yeah. creepy weirdo, or something. Yeah. I wonder. Just spend some time over the next several weeks. I, I will. I've already we, thought about. It. I think that that the people. Um, th- this guy has a great joke about this. Um, Mike Vecchione. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, he's yeah. a great, God, he fucked so I fucking saw him funny. Last night. So Dude, fucking the, uh, funny. He has yeah. this joke and his new uh, special, which I have nothing to do with, but I'm promoting on this show, where he talks. <laughs> he calls it the attractives, and he talks about how. Ugly people had this like safe haven oh, yeah. yes. with having it on, you know. Yeah. And I was like, that is so. I I thought that instantly, where I was like, man, ugly people ain't gonna give this up. No, no. And I had it happen to me. My doctor uh, during COVID because we just moved out here it was a new doctor and all that other shit. Uh, get, like TRT once a week, um, obviously to stay jacked and ripped and young. But yeah. uh, the doctor, I always thought she was hot, and I was like, man, I bet you this girl's hot. Man, I bet you never saw her without the mask on. Uh, I mean, body, everything, and then boom, she w- finally took off the mask, and it was like a jack-o'-lantern's teeth, and I was like, holy fucking shit, yeah. you could have kept that on for the rest of this, and every guy that walked in would have been in love with you forever, but I guess there's going to be some points. It's like Melina from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Mm. That girl rips off, she just has a Baraka mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I would still fuck Melina, even if she you should. Oh, yeah, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you gotta, well, she, she, she got wide. Yeah, yeah. Have you, done a, have you done a I, bit on that? Because that would hit with the 90s kids. Dude, I You should do that on stage. That's I a should good, try that's a good it. joke. I do um I thank you. I uh I try to do some Street Fighter jokes mm. and then I could always tell like the laugh in the room. I'm like, all right, you, the nineties kids are scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you just gotta could figure out a way to port it over to Minecraft or something, I guess. Dude, I, I know. know. Well, I had a I'm trying to do I it's so funny because I'm you I had to I had to Google what video games were popular today besides like Fortnite, and then I realized I'm like, I don't even know I couldn't even reference this in the fucking mm. stage. I don't even know how I would reference that or Minecraft. Roblox. Jason Momoa doing a, 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 a Roblox or a Minecraft movie. It, really? Yeah, he's doing a Roblox. Yes. Movie. Roblox. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it my it might be Minecraft. It's one of the two. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? Weird. I mean, that's just like a soulless cash grab, but you know what? 
fuck it now. But also, yeah. I'm available to do it, Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Minecraft. It's Minecraft. It's Minecraft. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's one of but those. But what things. does Jimmy Stewart think about it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Legos on the computer. You got blocks in real life. You don't need to get on the on a on this machine to play with blocks. Where are we? <laughs> Jimmy Stewart re- reviews films. Always great. Yeah. I, if you hit him with a Jimmy Stew like that, and it'll be off the cuff, and it's always money for him Jimmy every Stew. single time. I yeah. love it every time for Jimmy Stewart. Um, what are you up for now? Uh, anything cool? Like, because to me, it's all superhero shit right now, right? Uh, is there anything else interesting that's at least coming down uh, the pike for you that you're uh, like, hey, dude, I read for this and I think this is going to be dope? I read. Oh, I read say? for I read for uh, read for Renfield. Mm. Oh shit, that's nice. out. That's out now. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, Nick but, Cage, but and... it was originally supposed to be Jude Law as Dracula instead of Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Now, now they got it right, bro. Yeah, they it, got it right. So, nobody is better for that role than dude, Nicholas he, fucking Cage. I fucking love, you know, I, I'm a diehard yeah, yeah, Cage fan. So are we. Same. Yeah. yeah. He is so good in the movie. He looks like Bela Lugosi when they put he him does. in black and white. I was yeah. like, God damn. It's, how have we never done this with him before? Mm. Um, but I, I read for that and I, I like to go see just the choices like that they make. The character that I read for, it was, they like cut, he was in like four or five scenes and then he was in like, he had like no joke, like five lines in the movie, which just happens like you audition for a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. and then you just, it gets down to like this. Yeah. So um, there's a bunch of, there's a new uh, show that I read for that's, that is about, um, it's like a Scarface uh, um, uh, Studio 54 that took place in the 70s in Miami. Okay. It's about two oh, brothers yeah. from Cuba. It's fucking amazing. Fuck yeah. And um and uh What it, networks, you know? I think it's for MGM Plus, oh, but my. it's got I mean They they get they're doing it right right bro, now. Bro, they yeah. this show, I mean, I got I got I read for one part that I'm like was clearly not right for. They were like a young Warren Beatty and I was like, "Have they seen my headshot?" Um, <laughs> I look like Danny DeVito and Warren Beatty's twins. And um <laughs> and uh and then they brought me in to read for um, the Steve Rubell part, who was the guy that did Studio yeah, 54. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't Steve. It was just based on him. But the scripts that I read, dude, it's fucking awesome. It's Didn't Mike Myers cute. play that role? He did. He did. In, the yeah. in, the eight, in the 90s? Or yeah. when, when was that? That, that was, was a long time ago. That was in the late Early. 90s. It was the, it was the biggest insult I've ever gotten in my life when I was at the commissary in college and, at the dorms. And I was eating. And I, we were talking to these girls we just met. It was like first day of college. And this one woman was like, have you seen Studio 54? And I go, yeah. And she goes, you look like Mike Myers' character. And I was like... I didn't think that my feelings could be hurt. Mm. Oh, oh wow. were you, like, were you mad because of the way he looks or because he's Canadian? About how uh, both, by the yeah. way. Yeah. No, no, I, I, because I know you have a deep anti-Canadian bias. Fucking, <laughs> I keep trying to <laughs> just, <laughs> flip this fucking thing. Um, oh yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, I just that was like wow. That and by the way, it hurt because it was accurate. Yeah, but yeah. but it was like so they brought me in for that, and that script is about these two brothers, one of them who runs the mob down there, and the other one who runs the hotel. And I don't know exactly. It's called like the. It's in Miami. The fake two name. Cuban dudes. Yeah, that's dope. It's that from the sweet. '70s. It takes place in the '70s, and they're shooting it in the Dominican Republic. And well, it's that, a series. It's a series. Oh, that's that's where all the cocaine yeah. started to build Miami. And, yeah, uh, it's like yeah. the origin stories of yep. that. It's like because it's pre Scarface time, dude. It's that I read for, and that was fucking that awesome. Would be dope. That seems like a really good show for you. I would like to see you in a remake of Six Pack uh, with uh, Kenny Rogers. I don't yeah. know if you've seen that movie, uh, but. Or over the top, bro. Oh, oh dude. Do you know this dude. one? Sylvester yeah, Stallone, slide. baby. You'd be fucking great. great he should have been in the Roadhouse time. remake. No, yeah. Dude. Jonah Hill took my fucking part, dude. I got to talk to somebody. Is Jonah Hill uh, really in the Roadhouse yeah, remake? And who is he playing? Uh, he's not playing Dalton, but uh, <laughs> hopefully he's not playing fucking Dalton. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, it's, no, it's no. Hall. Yeah, Jonah Hall's no, playing Dalton. Hall's playing Dalton. Yeah. But, but um, who's playing Sam Elliott? Yeah. Who do I don't I don't know who they, they he could, died. He died in the original, so did they bring him back? Like, oh, so it's not no, like it's a, a remake. remake. Yeah, this is a reboot. It's a re- right? it's a re- so it's a different. Yeah. I'm not sure. Similar characters. Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, no, because Swayze's dead. It's I mean, not like not... Dalton's kid or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, oh, I wonder so how not... they were gonna yeah. try to run it because I, I think, I it's, I think it's a remake. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was a remake too. So I, gotcha. I think Joan Hill's playing the blind guitar player, Jeff Healy, the guy that's mm. behind the chicken wire yeah. playing. Shut I don't know. I just made. Up. I just fucking made that up. Dude. I was like, you know, the best of all time. Stevie Ray Vaughan said that that boy was the best guitar player he ever seen in wow. his entire life. That's don't you cool. think? That's all they used to jam together and shit. So, as a yeah. as a as an actor, performer, whatever. At some point, you get so 
wealthy that you just start doing weird cameos and stuff. I always, I, I'm a troll. I can't help myself. Oh, dude, I love I that shit. Feel like I would. Daniel do that. Craig was a goddamn stormtrooper. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. 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 Or did you ever see? I know you've seen it. You, uh, um, Tusk. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. With yeah, Justin yeah, yeah. Long, with yeah. Johnny Depp plays that inept uh, yeah. dude. Well, like we talked about this actually two days ago on the mm. show. Uh, Liam Neeson just got. Uh, he's the lead in the new Naked Gun. He's playing uh, the the cop. He's playing Frank. Uh, Frank Drebin? Yes. Yeah. They're redoing Naked Gun oh, yeah. with, with Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson. And which so, I think is going to be so fucking But good. it was all oh, yeah. it was all from that one scene he did in that show with Ricky and Gervais. Life's too, life's short. too yes. short, yeah. yeah. About the, the green grocer and the AIDS. I, I played Oscar Schindler. I couldn't be. A- Honestly, <laughs> I, sorry, I, have that, AIDS. I have AIDS. That might be the best comedic scene I've ever seen in my life. Just well, for one scene. It, it's one of the best. I just did Mike seen. Eaton's uh, podcast yeah. out there, and we were talking about that Naked Gun to me is probably Windy City Heat for like a different reason. It's like a mockumentary documentary. Right. It's the funniest movie I think ever made, but for but but unintentionally intentionally. But just as a scripted film, I think Naked Gun is the funniest movie ever made. It's so really I'll good. take it a step further. Um, that's what made me an OJ Simpson fan as a child. He's so funny. He in the was movie. so funny in that movie, and that was one of the first comedies as a kid that I could watch because it was rated you know PG or PG thirteen or whatever it was that my parents took me to. And then you would it's see probably him in commercials PG. I don't think and everything else. In that movie, I don't they? think they did either. Yeah, I don't that, think would, they that would have been what put over to thirteen. You can get one fucking PG thirteen. Yeah, movie. right, yeah. right. I mean, it is it is so that movie. I rewatched it, no joke, probably like a month ago. It's Does it still, still hold up. Laugh out loud, funny. It still holds every up. scene. Okay. He his commitment is unreal in the movie. Yeah. When when his car blows up and he like and, and um he doesn't put it in park yeah. and, then, and then the thing then he goes and then he just looks at the camera and goes does somebody get a license plate? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's so stone cold and you're just like this guy is because he was a dramatic actor. Yep. For years. And it's yeah. the same with Liam Neeson. So they're hoping that'll be the same thing. Now the cool part about it is it's uh, the guys from Lonely Island who I think are uh, wrote into or directing it as well. Awesome. So it's got a decent shot. Those uh, guys are be, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So is great. it is Sandberg in it or just the other two guys? Not sure. Uh, L- Liam Neeson's the only one right now, mm. and uh, you know you got to wait to see if these things actually shake out and play because. But uh, that feels like a yes from everybody. I feel like people would. That's a movie where you go like they remade Fletch, and I love John Hamm. There was a rumor I think for a long time that, that it was going to be Jason Sudeikis. Wait, they remade Fletch? It, yeah. I didn't even know that. It's on Apple oh, with God. John Hamm. But you go back and watch, because I rewatched that like a couple weeks ago, and it's uh, what he is doing is so specific to Chevy Chase yeah. that it's like, it's not that I don't want to see. It's just, it's done, it's done. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yep. And in, until something comes along that's perfect, and that feels as soon as Liam Neeson, I go with that grocer scene, you're yeah. like, you could see it. It was like that was the test run. For it. With right, it. right. I couldn't. With it. I, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I couldn't even watch that. If it said I've Fletch, never even if heard I knew of that. it was a remake of Fletch, I wouldn't even put that on. Because I, I just, I don't want to see it. Maybe if it was Sedegas. So no, I but I mean, not with John Ham. I, mean, I mean, John Ham's John fucking, a great actor. He's, great he's a great actor, great and he's great really actor. fucking funny too. Very and you funny. have to be good looking, yeah, not to like yeah. be good looking for a comedic actor. Like that was the thing about Chevy. Mm. Like he was sort of like this, like that the smugness of it. Like how what's his name, Joel McHale played him in that mm. yep. Netflix movie because yep. they'd worked together on Community. It's like you really he had something so specific, the lovable smugness. That I think that, that that's just not John Hamm's brand. Yeah. Well, the two people, because that script was around for about 15, 16 years in Hollywood, right? And the people that were attached over the years uh, was Ryan Reynolds at one point. And then I um, remember two over that. the top for Ryan Reynolds, obviously. Fuck. Who else was uh, there? was somebody else similar in that fashion. And uh, then it went to one of the, fr- the Freaks and Geeks guys, and they, they just could never get this made. Um, and Chevy Chase wanted nothing to do with it. He was oh, like, yeah, fuck dude. you guys. I mean, I could see Bateman doing it kind of, but it's a different kind of movie, right? It is, though. That's the thing. There's something about Chevy who's un- he's unfazed, yeah. like when the police chief like, tries to rough him up, you know? Right. And they're punching him. There's this, the fact that he's believably unfazed yeah. and not, like he's just, you know, weirdly enough, and not be, he's not funny or can work in Hollywood anymore, but it's almost like there's a Kevin Spacey snarkiness oh, to yeah. what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Where Kevin Spacey's just like, he's totally unfazed by whatever you're doing. And sort of, the that entire movie is like that. a deep sigh and an eye roll. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he goes, and he always is about to say, and don't call me Shirley. And yeah. he's like, and he knows that he's fucking with yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. 
Uh, Spacey's one of those guys, by the way, where if he popped up again, I think I would forget about his bullshit. I would. I, I, we'll circle back to what I said earlier. I think you're wrong. I think people were not. I'll tell you. I, did I tell would you? I had, you be I, ready for I this? I had dinner with him. Not with him. Recently? Bro, I didn't tell you this? No. Oh, boy. No. So I'm sucking this dude off. No, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm balls deep in this bitch. Yeah. So, no, no. So I'm, uh, I am I go to, there's an Italian place right by me, and um, they have a... Uh, Sort of, uh, it's it's like on top of each other, like like meant like an Italian cafe mm -hmm. where it's like you know there, there's literally like two tables in between us right now. Are you yeah. in LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And this was when do they when, have the checkered fucking? No, no, no. It's like table real, It's all like butcher blocks. Oh, okay. okay. It's like yeah. a family yeah. restaurant yeah. like from go. south of Italy because all I, I used, it was the last real job I ever had, and so um, everything was like flown in. It was very good, uh, authentic Italian food. So, so anyway, but it's it's sort of like low key. It's a great place, but it's, it's kind of low key. So I'm sitting there with a friend. She's across the table, and there's like an empty table right here. But literally, like where that helmet is, mm. is Kevin Spacey. Like when everything is going on, when he has been kicked out of Hollywood and he's wearing this like ridiculous Russell Simmons Argyle baggy V-neck sweater. What? And he has on like these. Like these, a pirate shirt or some shit? But it's a sweater. It's like something that like, it's something that boys to men had on in like a music video. <laughs> yeah. And um, and he's pulling it off. Is he no, no, <laughs> There's no way. No, no, no. He looks I terrible. Say, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. It's like he's got, he's like the sleeves are kind of baggy. It looks like a kid like in its mom's nightgown. Was he so, trying to hide? No, hold on. So he, he literally has on like old man, like walking mall shorts that are too baggy. He's got the whitest hairless legs mm. and he's got on like, he's got on like walking shoes and he is sitting across from a 21 year old gorgeous man. <laughs> and, um, I was waiting for uh, boy or man to be said. Dude. If it had been under 21, I would yeah, have said boy, but exactly. he, but he was, well, he was drinking. I don't know if like whatever. And they're just sort of laughing it up. And Kevin is just, you know, he's like a fucking, you know, uh, uh, snake charm in this little dude. Yeah. And, um, and I'm with my friends and I just go and, and they sit down, but it's, it's kind of dark and it's moody. It's nice. It's like a good feel. And plus everybody's like, you don't want anybody to hear your conversation. Not that we're like talking about mm. QAnon or anything, but it's like, we're just, we just want to talk. We just want to hang, you know? And we're just like, so anyway, we're just going to, and then I just look over and I go, don't move. And she goes, what's wrong? And I go, nothing is wrong, but to your right is Kaiser Soze. <laughs> And she just goes like this, and she goes, what the fuck is he doing here? <laughs> and, and we are literally frozen. Like, we don't want the T-Rex to see us because yeah. we want to have a full conversation. We're not waiting outside. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go outside and have this conversation. <laughs> We're having it right now while he is two feet from us. Yeah. And we are just like, the timeline is insane that he is in public right now. And this is where, this is where if you were ask people the- people staring? Was, was anybody saying anything? So were there whispers? It's kind of weird, because the way it works is he, his back was to the door. Mm. So only, there was only a, a certain faction of the, of the, of the uh, restaurant that could even see him, that mm. he was in a lot of people's blind spots. His back was like to the, to like sort of, and it was on, um, it, was, it was like in a, a raised like booth kind of thing. Yeah. So they, you really couldn't see who it was. Okay. And, um, but man, I had a goddamn, he was in my sights. How long did he stay and then how long did you guys stay? Oh, he, he had a full meal. Oh, shit. Wow. And yeah, after you... he ate that boy, he ate the... <laughs> yeah. 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 And then you got strep. Yeah, you know, exactly. he, um, yeah well, <laughs> ended up in the COVID wing for seven problems. days. Yeah. He, we, it was like 20. When was it? I'm telling you, it must have been like when he, when, when Hollywood said, when Hollywood swiped left on him, it was probably six months later when he was like done. Like if you had seen him, you would have been like, are you still just moving stuff out of Hollywood? Yeah. yeah. Like what are you yeah. doing here? Do you have a storage locker? He came like, back to pick up his mail. Dude, a hundred percent. That's what it looked like. And so it was one of those things where it was like, it was like seeing OJ clean a knife the day after the trial, right. just at a table. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, what, did any part of you want to drop into like a deep South Carolina accent? And just start having your conversation. Just start doing. Not acknowledge him House at all. Of cards. Look at a camera and go, yeah. "What is this motherfucker doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> we are far too close to a school <laughs> for you to be here. Uh, I don't think he would have been emotionally prepared to handle that. No, no. And they. And here's the thing. The truth is, at that point, I don't know exactly where. I mean, he he wasn't charged with anything at that point, and then he like they. I think Anthony Rapp, I think took him to court, and he, yeah, and, and he, he, he beat it. 
He beat the ref. He still hasn't actually. Uh, uh, you knew it. You knew that was Come coming. On, dude. He yeah. still hasn't officially been charged with a crime. Though, no. Right? That was still civil. A hundred percent. And so at that, I think there was just, there was like opinions about him, mm-hmm. but I didn't exactly know the, the stories. And of course it's like, you know, I'm not going to sit there and start talking to the guy, but it was just the weirdest, I think, because that's one thing you don't expect to see at an Italian dinner as a man under that much scrutiny in yeah. such a public place yeah. in the middle of Hollywood. Because he was in hiding in Baltimore in like a condo forever, and they couldn't find him. And then one, there was one paparazzi shot that they had of him in Baltimore. Well, he was there and he was in Italy. Yes. No joke. He yep. was in the South. I went to, I went to Amalfi Coast, and the, the tour guide was like, you see that... I, I, this is 100% true. We're going in a boat, and he's like, you see that house up there? That is the, oh, belong to the actor Kevin Spacey. And I go, oh, cool. And then I swear to God, I go, what's that building? Huge building? He goes, swear, down below. He goes, that is a school for boys. Shut mm. the I fuck up. I swear uh, uh, where, where you God. Like, were you like Positano or some shit yes, like that? Yes, in Prano. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like right there. Yeah. Do you tell the, the realtor, like, hey, so here's what I'm into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you find me a house? Here's my wish list. I Kevin need a two, Spacey. We, we did find you a house, garage. and all Kevin Spacey said is, a chef's keys. A chef's keys. That was insane, though, when I was like, there is no way. But the guy didn't know the news. Like, Wait, are you he just wasn't saying this ironically. Are you, yeah, to, are you yeah. following Kevin Spacey around the world? Maybe. Maybe. Remember that show, I'm with Busey? Remember that show? I'm with yeah. Sp- of course. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm with Spacey, I'm but with he doesn't Spacey. know it. And you just keep ending up near, you're like, why are there so many boy schools around here? What the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, it literally, it just looks like I'm doing a tour of the yeah. schools. <laughs> then the FBI calls you, like, hey, you need you're to knock it off. You're on Megan's lawn. Yeah, you need to knock it off, bud. Dude. Now, with, with the Spacey <laughs> thing, when you're there, can you even concentrate on your date or no. your own meal? Because you're staring yeah. at him no. the entire time, right? The I've entire been, time. I've been next to people like that where I'm like, hey, dude, I'm so enthralled with whoever X was. You oh, know? I'm trying I'm to listen to their conversation same the here. entire yeah, time. Same here. Yeah. I'm like, you know, and I can't, and it's, you know, I mean, I couldn't hear anything they were saying, and now they're my friend. Like we couldn't hear anything. <laughs> oh shit! And, but they're like from this far away. Yeah, right? and yeah. it was just. But they're sort of. You know, he's sitting there and he's just like laughing away. There's never like, no thought in your mind to like start doing an impression of him, just talking to you. I just person. wanted to lean. <laughs> That's what I tried to do because I was just like, uh huh. Yeah, and I was still not. And they didn't sit. They, this table wasn't sat, so it didn't look like that awkward. And I'm just like, uh huh. And I can't hear. And I think he was like asking the the the, the guy about himself. Like it was like, oh, it's like first date. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it felt like. Just, that type of thing. Christian Mingle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he asking about movies? Have you seen this movie that I'm in or whatever to the to the no, kid? The, the guy hasn't. Everybody knows all the movies Kevin Spacey's been. I would think, right? No, yeah, but that kid but was so young. Twenty one. He wasn't yeah. born. Yeah, you weren't born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then he was like, he's like, oh yeah, weren't you in a Bug's Life? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like that's the only thing that guy knows him from, dude. Yeah. Are we being too Shit. hard on Kevin Spacey? Is he just the gay version of Leonardo DiCaprio? No. So he used to roll out uh, deep with like 20. Sorry. What? He's Leonardo DiCaprio likes fucking young girls. But apparently. not but, that young. Well, it's not Dalia. It's, you but know, also, they're, they're of age. But also, uh, it seems, I mean, from everything I've heard about Leo, it's consensual. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fair the enough. thing with Anthony but Rapp charged all... him is that he tried to have sex with him against his will. Right. Yeah. And all, all DiCaprio's girls are 20s. So it's like, he's fine on well, that. Well, 20 yeah. to 23. Yeah, well, either way. It's a pretty narrow window. Uh, as long as you hit the two, whatever comes after, whatever the digit is afterwards, you're fine on Dimitri that. Dimitri Martin yeah. used to really do a really good bit on this he goes you can you can you can't be specific about liking people under the age of 18 so if you say i love kids yeah girls like hey do you want to have kids someday like yeah i love kids if a girl says do you want to have kids someday you go yeah i love 12 year olds now you're in trouble. Now you're right? in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And you I think the specificity it, of Leonardo funny. DiCaprio's window is a little bit troubling for me, to be honest. It's not. Like, he'll keep it. He'll, he'll always keep it 20s. He'll keep it on the up and up, and he'll keep it in private. Spacey, though, at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just grabbing fucking, like, 17-year-olds dicks and But bars he was shit, out yeah. in public. He would roll 20 deep with, with dudes that were, I mean, right on that cusp. Yeah, at least Brian. 17, 18. At and, least Brian Singer kept it at home. Right. And we and we right. didn't know until yeah. Jared, so Jared got raped. Jared yeah. went over to his house, and our, our co-host got raped. Raped by Brian you know, Singer. Jared, and, uh, yeah. Totally kidding. Um, but he was at the house. No and, uh, shit. Jared was at his house. Shit. And so he calls me and he goes, Hey, dude, you know everybody in Hollywood. What's the story? And I go, Where are you at? And he goes, Brian Singer's house. And I was like, Get the fuck out of there. Yeah. I go, 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 go. Get out of there. And he goes, Why? And I go, I go, Let me ask you this. And I go, Before you answer, I can describe the scene right now. There's a movie on, probably in one, probably of, the one of his screen. Yes. And I go, There's probably 10, 15 boys who look questionable 
probably 18 to 22 in that range. Ether goes, is being pumped in through goes, the vents. They're all oh, outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah, they're all outside. And I go, I know. Where are you at? And he goes, I'm inside. And I go, get the fuck outside then. <laughs> and then you just hear him go, Jared. And you go, the call's coming from inside the house. <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> so when he got popped, uh, Jared was like, dude. And I go, so yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend. Um, uh, but Jared wasn't good enough. To, he wasn't good enough, like, looking to fuck. So uh, he, he was. Sick. I think he was an, he was probably a big. Bingo card situation, veteran or something. I, I need to. I need to. Fuck oh yeah, you know like I mean? it'll fill up. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. 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 I, 028 or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. That's probably yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah, he wants to do his service. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Yeah. But thank, thank you. <laughs> my, my, my my buddy worked on a film with Brian, and he said that he tr like tried to molest him, or was like grabbing him all the time. Yep. And this was like, I mean, I'm talking about like early 2000s yeah. when I'm saying like if you were in Hollywood you knew the rumors but it's yeah. like there was no sh social media shares or shit so yeah, like yeah you were safe yeah you were like oh you didn't know about it until it was happening and then he, he was like remember that rumor about Brian Singer and I'm like I think I'd heard something about that and he goes it just happened to me on the set no way my buddy said it I what mean you, what, what how aggressive is it is it like Austin Powers in the first one where he's like oops I fell over yeah, or is yeah. it like he's a straight up fucking he said it was on set off. But like, okay. what do you, what do you and was of, it a, was it he was grabbing on, his cock on okay. set? So there's like, like 50 a, fucking a, people there. That. Like you gotta like check somebody, obviously. Right? No, I like, mean like, they didn't back then. People and for I mean, listen, it happened. Brave people did come forward, for, but most of the time people just let it slide. Didn't Brad Pitt the slap the shit out of uh, uh, Weinstein one choked time? Him. Yeah, he choked, choked him, him up against the wall, and he said, I think he was dating Gwyneth Paltrow, and he yeah. goes, if you ever fucking do that again, I'll kill you. Yeah. Um, and that could have ended his career, but he didn't give a shit. Nothing's going to end Brad Pitt's career. No. Well, but that was early on in the 90s where... Mm. After I mean, which movie, though? Oh, that's true. He, uh, he was dating Gwyneth well into his career at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. He, was probably, he was probably untouchable. You're right. Yeah, that so was River runs through it. And he's the yeah, safest. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah, safest yeah. guy, by the way, because he always like that. I have. I, I've never met him, but everybody that I know who knows him, he's always a girlfriend guy. Yeah. There's no. I mean, the Angelina stories. There, it's like people don't know if they're her or him. You know what yeah, I mean? Like people are separate. That's it's gotta her. be so. Let's I weigh in nothing on this. Yeah, I know yeah, some yeah. shit. Yeah. I know some shit, but I won't say that. Yeah, her, her. Yeah, <laughs> off, off, off camera. Everybody wow, saying everybody. Her. We're, we're having people saying her. We're having people walking off the street and just yeah. saying it. Yeah. Her. <laughs> Are they just like, big Walking Phoenix fans? Yeah, either one. Either way, nailed it. That's a very obscure movie. Thank you very yeah. much. God. Um, Autism. I, I, You're welcome. I, I love it. Um, but uh, yeah, but but I've only heard good things about him, and so I think mm. that that. I think something like that he has a reputation of just being like a great guy. I yeah. know some of the people that were uh, the military advisors on that war machine show. Yeah, that he did for Netflix. Everybody fucking loves that dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. He seems like such a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I, look, that's no, that's nothing bad about Angelina Jolie. Sometimes relationships just don't work and shit gets weird for a while. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? no. But she did wear Billy Bob Thornton's blood around her neck for a while. They fucked yeah. in the car before a little bit of a red MTV flag. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they literally, yeah. That's only the flag. second highest red flag. Now, this is Angelina Jolie's ex-boyfriend. Yep. current brother. Yep, that's her brother oh. right there. Uh, what do you mean? You guys remember this? Guess, yeah, of course. Yeah. For real? What do you mean? Yeah, that's what, her brother. What do you mean current? Brother. What do you mean current brother? Well, he's alive, and uh, she, she gets fucking got weird with her brother. Like, bi like brother. the biological, or they just yeah, like biological through marriage. Because so is this marriage. a Tom Brady situation, no. yeah. or what's oh, yeah. going on here? So. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem. Like you, you, shame plays a very important role in society, right? So yeah. you, you wouldn't have lost your virginity to your cousin if somebody would have said, "Hey, you know what, young laser? I don't know what you went by back then, yeah. young laser." Don't fuck your first cousin, dude. Laser well, they, they tried to say well, they, they were very, yeah, they're very, up, they're very upset about it. You know? Oh, I see. So you, know, you just Thanksgiving didn't Thanksgiving was weird yeah. and shit. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah. whatever. You only know only what for saying? like two Thanksgivings. After yeah, that, nobody I mean, remembered. Most people are smoking weed with their you know relatives behind the grandma's house, and I'm 69 and with my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different. It's different. But it's then, a, we live in a different place than y'all. Exactly. Where, where, like you can't you can't do this on the no on the red carpet like in that photo. Yeah, that's weird. Can't. There's too many people. Like we all saw that at the same time. And it was just like, wait, what the fuck is going on? And then they went in, and I think she ended up winning an Oscar. And then uh, they were kissing on stage or off stage or something like that, too. Like, it didn't end. It wasn't just on the red carpet. How do you know they're not Targaryens? No idea. See? A, uh, yeah, yeah. Son of a bitch. It's a Take question. one moment out of your life and give other people the benefit of the doubt, you piece of shit. Yeah. You yeah. judgmental piece of shit. Yo, where does that idea come from, though? Like, like in all those uh, movies and shit like that, like... They're pure breeding, like like inbred breeding. Oh, it's like from makes, Queen, it keeps, Queen keeps Victoria. The, it, keep, keeps the bloodline pure. Queen but like Victoria. In actuality, like yeah. people are inbreeding in Kentucky, and they got yeah, like fucking yeah, yeah. 18 Well, the, the German-Prussian 
groups did that as well, Bob. If I'm a not lot mistaken. of people did it, yeah. right? It was yeah. like a, it's like a yeah. yeah. It was for years and years to keep the bloodline strong yeah. and pure. Whatever. We didn't know anything about genetics until the early part of the 20th century, late 19th, early 20th century. So nobody knew about that stuff. Although there is some religious texts that say not to fuck your relatives because it'll produce mongos. Which yeah. is yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, we, we just did a story about it a few weeks ago on this show. Uh, did you hear about that place that's got 970 of them? And they're all living in one town together. And some of them like, only communicate through grunts and shit. Yep. Iceland? No, no West Virginia. It's, 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 it's in West Virginia. It's here yeah. in America. Yeah, we yeah, showed, yeah, yeah. So this photographer went out there, this uh, really like high-end photographer, Whoa. and he took these amazing pictures of them. Yeah. He's, that guy from LA, him. he's that guy from L.A. that does those documentaries about homeless people and drug addicts mm-hmm. and shit. Yeah. I can't remember his name. I would recognize his face if I saw so him. So some hills have eyes, people? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they grunt. They, they, they yeah, grunt. That's, that's all they do is grunts. Yeah. Here's the... Bob's got pictures right there, bam. of yeah, yeah. And this is a current photo? Correct. So these well, are current like photos. like two or three years ago, I think? Yeah, two this? or three yeah. years ago, but he's been following them for a while, and then he's got like a coffee table book, and then there's another book coming out, now, and then they sold the rights, I think, yeah, for yeah. a documentary. To be fair, these are the worst among them, I think. There's women. Well, there's yeah. women. Show show Kite the women. And there's one that's called oh. the hot one. Yeah. Dude, that bloodline is so pure. Jesus Christ. <laughs> they all look like they're wearing masks. I know. That's, did her shirt say Zoom Queen? What does that mean? Uh, not sure. Uh, maybe she takes a lot of business meetings. Yeah. You know? um, and that's her preferred uh, facial recognition device there is Zoom. I'm a... What if her shirt said drinking bros? Though? Oh my God. I, I'll send them. Wow. Treat. That would be I can afford to send them. We all see it at the same yeah, we just, time. We just send it to them. Yeah. Fuck it. Well, you guys heard what we did with uh, when we initially started Hard AF Seltzer. We did a, a hobo advertising. Hobo advertising. Hobo advertising, yeah. yeah. So we gave it yeah. out to all the homeless in uh, downtown Austin. God damn, that's And brilliant. then we took, we had a photographer go down there, same sitch, and then take photos of, of these guys drinking the Hard AF Seltzer, getting fucked up all day. And then uh, I think it was Joel. Joel, are you back there? Uh, was it you? You took the picture of the dead guy, right? And then you put the can right next to his foot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we don't know that? for sure he was dead. We well. By it, the way, yeah, that hard as fuck. <laughs> 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 so I mean, he was a Schrodinger bum. It's like we don't know so if he's dead or not. So you are handing out cans of. So here's the thing: you guys both have podcasts um, that are new, uh, Kite Club, obviously, and then uh, your drunk uncle. Um, when you guys get into these advertisers. Uh, it's getting intense now where like they, they'll do those, these brand checks. Um, what is it called? Brand safety or yeah. whatever. And they'll yeah. call you and, and they'll write a report now. Now, what they're doing is it's not necessarily coming from the advertisers themselves, um, but they're charging. I mean, not the clients. Um, they're charging the clients extra money to do these brand safety things so the advertisers can make more money, which is fucking bullshit. Um, and so we get a call one day. And, uh, and they were like, hey, you guys, this, this one sponsor is going to drop you and blah, 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 blah. And we were like, why? And they were like, well, we have a written report and we'll email it to you. Now, in that report um, was our social media and they had flagged the hobo advertising. And they said, hey, you guys are taking advantage of hobos or homeless people. And I was like, no, no, no. Have you not met homeless people? Like, they want 8% alcohol. No. That's the only thing they want or drugs. And I was like, but we don't have a drug company. So we gave them the other, and uh, and they said no, and they pulled the sponsorship. Yeah, from really? It. Yeah, dead serious. Well, they pulled it uh, ultimately because we refused to take it down because fuck yeah, you. Fuck that. Yeah, I I, well, but it was a social media post, so it yeah. wasn't even in 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 the show mm-hmm. that the advertiser was on. So it was a social media post from like three or four months before. Wow. Now you got to think somebody may have thought about doing this for Bud Light, right? At some point. What? What's their brand safety report look like? Oh, like boy. so here, let's look down the list of the people that drink our product. All right, cool. Now, is there a dude that dresses like a woman we can hire? Yeah. Because that's what they're into, obviously. Now, that's either bad math, which is possible, because they're not, Bud Light's uh, Belgian and not Asian. Yep. Right? Fair. Fair Fair enough. So who knows? Fair. Who knows? Or it's just stupid. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know why everybody wants an apology for it. That's weird to me. Like, let... Bud Light can do whatever the fuck they want. You don't deserve an apology from a company because they chose, they made a decision. But it is kind of stupid. Well, you're just you're just fucking yeah. your whole marketing, entire brand. Marketing yeah. wise, yeah, that's yeah. Kind of dumb. Who said that was a good like? Hey, this can work. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like because you got to know your audience, right? You got to know your brand. But and, they didn't even sell the cans. We were talking about this on Mike. They, no, nope. it was a six they pack. Just made it, they, they made just a six made pack for her. Six pack. Yeah, which is like the most expensive six pack in the history of human beings. Oh. So and I'm going to, yeah, Rob, I, I'm going to text you this photo from the other night. You know um, you can buy pre-gay Bud Lights on eBay now. You can, yeah. They're pre-gay? selling for $45. $46. Yeah. 
Well, dude, I've been to I've been to some gay bars before. It's, like, I don't remember anybody or trans. I remember yeah. drinking. I don't Ryan know Martini what it means, but I was gonna say yeah. we need to get some of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they're also selling bags of air on there yeah. from from Kanye. Well, so. I would prefer a and a girl selling fart jars. Yeah, no, she almost died. I know. So she had to start selling her fucking socks or some shit. Or I don't know what's going on. She's now. farting too much. In- yeah, she almost yeah. blew her asshole out. Yeah, yeah. yeah and all the gas. Hospital. Yeah, she was eating. I mean, that's how horses get colic. By they get like a fucking. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Okay. Uh, spasm in their esophagus, and they start forcing themselves to burp, and you get colic from that. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but on the Bud Light side, from us, because we were in these meetings every every single day for the seltzer, um, they're looking for products like ours now, where they're like, hey, dude, these sales are fucking awful, and we need mm. something to replace it with. And uh, you guys seem like the type of guys that wouldn't you know, do anything. It was like, oh, we don't give a shit. And they were like, great. So we keep getting picked up. And you, you kind of wonder, is it just the hype or the media or whatever? And then, Bob, I texted you that picture if you can throw it up. So this is the gas station next to my house. Um, and I took this two nights ago after I coached my kid's soccer team. Warm cans of Bud Light. And they did a full series with Texas. So that's the Texas star on there. It was yeah. Like the, I think the I've Texas seen these. edition. Yeah. One dollar manager special. As you can see, there's no ice. There's no nothing. That's like, a warm beer. That's a warm beer. Take the fucking can and get out of the store for one dollar. And, uh, and I asked the manager, because, you know, we're in there a handful of times a week. It's right in front of my house. And I said, hey, is it, is it that bad? And he goes, it, it's, it's worse than you can imagine. And he goes, go look at the cooler. So I went back to the cooler, and there wasn't one, one sold in the entire cooler. And he goes, we have to get rid of these or send them back to the company. But we're not sure what to do because they own like 100 brands. Mm. I don't understand so, why companies feel the need to even have a fucking opinion about totally. anything. Shut the fuck up and sell your booze, dude. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why the fuck do you have an opinion about something as a company? Now, if Bud Light's out there and they're looking for a real man to sell some shit, get Uncle Laser out there. Um, I mean, that'll really bring back your audience. Listen here, dude. I mean, I mean, mean, God damn. If there was ever a person for like uh, for Bud Light right now, it's you, dude. I'm telling. I'll I'll be shotgun and let. I'll, I'll stay drunk. Just send me a bunch well, of Well, that's not you can very put the, that's the, different the, than yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, send me them rainbow cans. I don't give a yeah. shit. Whatever, dude. I'll drink that goddamn beer. You know He'll taste the rainbow all I'll damn t- day. Fuck, yeah. Yeah. Give me some Skittles while you're at it. I don't give a shit. Whatever you need. No. <laughs> Is it bad etiquette to piss in the middle of the podcast? Or you want me no, to no, no, no. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll go. This is perfect I'll timing because we're, we're this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week. So I was going to ask you, Brent, okay. uh, swap, uh, come on up swap here. Swap on in, dude. Come on hey, in. This seat's swap warm, on baby. in well, here. This seat's, this seat's warm. Uh, we wanted to give it to our insurance guys. So uh, we're in the middle. Good. We're in the middle of, of meeting investors and all that other stuff. And uh, we needed insurance immediately. This guy does all our insurance. And I said, hey, dude. Uh, you got this contract done. It was done uh, before Friday. And I go, mm-hmm. just come on the show and plug your company and thank you because you've done a million deals for us. Uh, this is Brent Tidwell. Put this about an inch from your face. There thank you. Go, Brent. you. Boom, Brent. Uh, so you are a veteran. Tell everybody what you did in the military. I am. Uh, well, first off, I'm just, I've had a fucking blast today. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Party F will do that for you. Sure That's will. why we give it to homeless people to try to improve on a, their lives. Seeing you on a few things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you you sent me a video in the middle of a hurricane yeah. with an ACDC uh, back in not wasn't back in. Black. I was I was uh, in the hur- I was on the beach during the middle you of the were, hurricane. Yeah, hey, yeah. and I said this is my kind of customer, mm. but <laughs> I am very. I listen. I'm grateful. I am proof that the American dream is alive mm. and uh, and prosperous. Um, Twenty five years in the Navy. Congratulations, man. Gunner's yeah. mate, command mass chief. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, I wasn't going to be a CO of a warship. Uh, um, yeah, so you, five, you, five cruisers and a, and a few tours and around the globe and, and Japan. And you managed to make it out of the Navy with only uh, banging how many dudes? Like, nope. what? How many, no yeah, dudes. No, how listen, many guys? How many guys? Were no there? dudes the whole time? Not no, one? straight up. Okay. <laughs> straight up. Lie detector test or no? No. Yeah, hey, yeah. take it all day. You <laughs> had a dinner with Kevin Spacey 38. a couple years ago. I knew I recognized him. <laughs> that's what I've enjoyed the most today, and I appreciate that. I mean, just the conversation has been funny. I was mm. a Spacey fan when mm. when uh, he was on the Fred Claus and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. And then he gets, <laughs> that movie is so he gets fucking written funny. off, yeah. and I'm like, and then I recognized you. Me and my uh, new brother right there, we recognized you, and I went, 
oh my god, that dude's in a fucking Volkswagen commercial <laughs> and everything. Stupid. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. I've learned a lot today just seeing things, and I didn't mean to go off course. I don't care. We uh, it's a fucking Dan, podcast. You do Dan, Dan, we don't know what we're watch doing. Watch online and stuff like that, and it just uh, y'all all the time. While I'm sitting at my desk. I'm ADD. I can do two or three things at one time. I can have y'all playing in one side. I'm writing policies in another, but all I do are go after small business owners, hardworking Americans, patriots, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. I met y'all through a young man by the name of Reagan Rosa who started his own mechanical cable company for gamers. No mm. shit. When he was okay. 21 years old, he needed a lease of space. He reached out to this um, professional real estate agent to lease a space, and she, and I can't even remember her name, I texted Reagan before I got here, and yeah. I said, what's her name, what's her name? She looks like she stepped out of you know, any kind of model magazine. Laura. Laura. I think it's Laura. Laura. Or, what yeah. Is yeah. Commercial. Yeah. Anyway, cool Fair, as they yeah. come, and she introduced she's great. me to y'all through Reagan yeah. Rosa. Well, she's a really fucking hard worker. You're yeah. a really hard worker. I think you've done four or five deals with us insurance-wise. And, and I don't mean to stretch it out like that. I'm just telling you how, if you're listening to me, if you surround yourself with great fucking people in life, mm -hmm. whether you go in the Navy as a 19-year-old and you've been married one month. Yep. You're going to succeed, period. But if you surround yourself with shit, you're going to be shit. And that's the bottom line of the story I have. It is. The hard AF waiting around. <laughs> this is the greatest shit I've ever drank in my life, and I'm fucking done. It's 8%, and it Thank sneaks you. up on you. And, uh, and it hasn't snuck up on Brent. Um, totally sober. And, uh, <laughs> Chef, doing a great <laughs> Old ladies on the in route to come get me. Hey, is yeah. she really? That's hilarious. Tell everybody the name of your company real quick. Anchored Insurance Services. Anchored Insurance Services. I do small business owners. Yep. Concierge. You need a car. You need a website. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take it off your plate. I'm going to write your insurance A to Z. And, and you it's love it. Be done you right. genuinely love your job, uh, which is what I love about you. Where no two days are the same. First thing, because uh, first thing you said when you walked in, you were like, "God damn it, man! I love my job, dude. Thanks for thanks for everything. Like I love you. doing it. Telling and you. it's rare to meet somebody in insurance who loves their job. If you're a veteran, and you're retiring or getting out of the military in general, and you don't go into insurance because you already inherently own and understand risk uh, risk management. Yeah. You're, you're killing yourself. Hmm. Well, cheers, Brent. Uh, we're grateful to you. Thanks for getting that uh, contract done for us. And uh, and it's been great having you here no, today. Cut, Thank you for stopping you by. Because I know I, I ran. We don't cut out. No, we don't cut anything. Everything is unedited. I'm in awe of what y'all are doing. Thank you. What you do <clears throat> for us. And we appreciate it, for Serious. real, man. Yeah. What you do for us, it's, it's outstanding, and thank you. And then, Jonathan Kai, you've got a new podcast out right now. I'm a huge fan. Uh, tell everybody where they can find it. And who's your co-host, by the way? Ryan Neeson, um, I think you met him last time mm -hmm. in Vulcan. Great guy, funny dude. Um, it's, yeah, Kite Club podcast on uh, the socials, and I'm at Jonathan Kite, and I'm going to be in Austin. Uh, tonight I got two shows, and then I'm doing my hour tomorrow night at the new Sunset Room. Nice. Oh, perfect. On 6th. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So That's awesome. come on and see me. Uh, are you going to do Comedy Mothership anytime soon? A bunch of people are asking. I... Uh, I want to do it. It's funny. I didn't even last minute. I literally hit you up. I was like, dude, I'm, I decided last minute to come in town because yeah, uh -huh. I had something move. So I was like, fuck it. Everyone's going to be down here for Moon Tower anyway. Mm -hmm. I just want to hang. But I would love to. I, I, I just I haven't gone by there yet. But I, the outside looks gorgeous. Beautiful. And, and I've seen a lot of the sets that people have mm -hmm. been posting online. Yep. Congratulations to those guys over there. That looks really, really cool. And to the Sunset guys. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, it helps everybody. Um, yeah. Like all the it's clubs, weird. everybody goes and does all the clubs yeah. while they're here. Yeah. It keeps celebrities like yourself in town longer and everything else. So you can hit them up, boom, boom, boom. And, uh, and it's great. Your podcast is great. You're one of our faves. You've been on the show a million times. Love and, being uh, here. You have a standing invite anytime you're in town. Thank so. you, baby. Thank or you. sitting, either way. Well, yeah, you can sit. I've stand. been standing this whole time. Have you? Yeah, yeah. He comes from a long line of dwarf wizards. So he sure we does. established that. My father is 6'2. Is he? He's shrinking by the day. Yeah. Can he dunk still? Uh, he does, but he chooses not to. Yeah, I said, I, I swear to God, I used to do a thing. I go, my father humble. looks like a, a, a magician who has his own show on QVC where he never mentions magic. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a wizard who all he does is talk about the importance of changing your oil and bargaining at yard sales. <laughs> 
Uh, check out Kite Club. It is available uh, on all platforms where you can get all of your podcasts. Uh, thanks for being here. Uncle Laser, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Love doing these Friday shows. It's a blast. We can get fucked up. We can work out hangovers. All the things. For Danthony, Danthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone.